Joshua Boatze knocks out Reynold Quinlan in the first round. Now, let me describe to you exactly what I saw. From the opening bell, both men came out and started jabbing. Quinlan's jab actually looked to be the sharper, and he landed a couple which noticeably rocked Joshua Boatze's head back. Just under a minute into the round, Joshua Boatze landed a left hook, which appeared to slightly shake Reynold Quinlan. They then got tangled up a little bit as Joshua Boatze moved in to follow up. Boatze loaded up with a right hand and smashed it into the back of Reynold Quinlan's head while they were kind of tangled up. It wasn't on the back of the ear. It wasn't on the top of the head. It was directly on the back of Reynold Quinlan's head. This is where Joshua Boatze leaned in and smashed a really hard right hand to the back of Quinlan's head. I've watched it several times. That is definitely what happened. As I say, they continued to tangle up after that. The referee stepped in, said break, parted the two men. He had his hands in the way. And at least a second after the referee had called break and put his hands in the way to part the two men, Joshua Boatze landed a left hook to Reynold Quinlan's chin, which clearly hurt Reynold Quinlan. And this was, remember, just a two seconds or so after getting hit with a really hard right hand to the back of the head. He then gets caught with a really hard left hook to the chin, which was at least a second after the referee had stepped in and called break. Quinlan was hurt, so he took a knee. Now, what happened after that is Reynold Quinlan got finished off by Joshua Boatze. But that little period there of, let's say, three or four seconds between, uh, you know, from the left hook, the lead left hook, which was a, a clean punch. I think it was a lead left hook, a clean punch, which Boatze landed on Quinlan's chin. After that, an illegal rabbit punch, which was a really hard shot, which must have discombobulated Quinlan. And then another illegal shot, which was after the break, okay? Fighters do do these things, but in a situation where there is fair officiating and a diligent referee, Joshua Boatze potentially could have lost a couple of points there. Some referees might have even said, you know what? I'm going to disqualify you. It's unusual for a fighter who hits after the break to get disqualified for the first infringement, okay? But at the very least, a warning. And the referee knew that Boatze had hit Quinlan after the break, which is why he gave Quinlan extra time. But I don't remember him warning Boatze for that very late shot after they called break. And yeah, defend yourself at all times, of course, but it is illegal to hit after the break. And it's certainly illegal to be smashing right hands into the back of somebody's skull. Again, not just behind the ear. It's not one of them situations where you're aiming to hit the guy on the side of the head, but he ducks in a certain way that the punch ends up hitting him behind the ear or behind the head. No, no, no. This wasn't like that. This was Boatze in, in a, you know, a tight situation with a kind of jostling for position and trying to exchange, but also trying to defend themselves, smashing a big right hand into the back of Renault Quinlan's head. That's what happened. Okay, I'm just describing what happened. I ain't no Boatze hater or nothing like that. I'm just telling you exactly what I saw. Boatze has a bit of Mike Tyson in him there, <laughs> from what I saw there. Mike Tyson was a guy who would elbow people in the mouth, hit them while they were down, hit them after the bell, hit them after the break. All that kind of stuff used to go on with Tyson. I'm not saying Boatze's anywhere near as... Uh, extreme as Tyson when it comes to the fouling but from what I saw there he's got obviously no issue with you know committing some fouls and there was two in quick succession which led to Renault Quinlan ending up on the canvas as well as a clean punch a, a very legal punch before those two infringements those two infractions so yeah Boatze rolls on with another quick win and his promoter, Eddie Hearn, after the fight, said that they're going to order Joshua Boatze versus Anthony Yard for the British title because it looks as though Callum Johnson's going to vacate because he apparently has a big fight in the United States. 
be interesting to see who it's against. It could be another world title shot. So this is what Eddie Hearn is saying. Remember, Eddie Hearn promotes Callum Johnson, Johnson, so he should know. And as I say, Bratsy versus Yard for the British. I would be absolutely amazed if Anthony Yard took the Joshua Bratsy fight, given what his manager, Tunde Ajayi, and his promoter, Frank Warren, have been saying. I would be absolutely blown away if they turn around and say, okay, yeah, we'll take the Bratsy fight in 2019. That's okay. We'll do the British title. I'm sure that Tunde Ajayi and Frank Warren are going to say, we're past British level right now. Why would we fight for a British title at this point? You know, we need to build the Boatsy fight up and fight for a world title at some stage, not a British title. That's what I'm expecting from them. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong, but we'll see. For now, Boatsy marches on. If he doesn't get the Anthony Yard fight, and I expect him not to for the British title, who is the next available contender? Could it be Jose Burton against Boatsy for the British title? That's also a good fight. Let me know what you think in the comments section below. How did you assess Joshua Bratsy's performance against Renault Quinlan? He obviously shows up Chris Eubank Jr., but hey, Chris Eubank Jr. is at a lighter weight. He's nowhere near as uh, big as Joshua Bratsy. He's really a natural middleweight. Bratsy, a natural light heavyweight, full, uh, light heavyweight in the amateurs. And Bratsy's a tall guy. It says he's six foot one. Uh, sorry, six foot two here on BoxRec. I think on the Sky broadcast, they had him listed at six foot one or six foot one and a half. That's accurate. I've seen Joshua Bratsy in person. That's accurate. He's a tall guy, light hair. Some people were early in his career thinking he was a really short guy. He's not. He's tall. He's definitely, definitely over six feet tall. Um, so, yeah, let me know what you felt about his performance against Quinlan. And where do you see him going next? Do you see the Jose Burton fight as the most realistic? Or do some of you actually think he might get the Anthony Yard showdown in 2019? Drop it all in the comment section below. It's something I'm out. Join me on Patreon. I upload a minimum of two podcasts every single week, covering a wide variety of controversial topics, as well as live stream Q&A sessions. Take a look on screen right now at some of the podcasts I've produced so far. For just $3 a month, the equivalent of about £2 a month, you get access to all my new podcasts and my entire back catalogue of past podcasts, including my popular Confessions of a Nightclub Bouncer series. You can listen on your computer or on your smartphone or tablet by downloading the Patreon app from the Google Play Store or the App Store for free. The Patreon app also allows you to download each podcast in MP3. For less than the price of a cup of coffee, you get access to dozens of hours of exclusive content. It's easy to sign up, there's no contract, and you can cancel at any time. So come and join our community of free and critical thinkers by signing up with me here on Patreon today.